I don't know how to make videos. Uh, we should lock the door though and not talk about making videos while in the bathroom. <laughs> Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and here is a common problem. Your flight leaves very late in the day. Either it's the only flight available or it was the cheapest one. However, your hotel kicks you out at 10 or 11 a.m. There's no late checkout, and so what are you gonna do besides go to the airport because you're covered in bags? That means there are nine, 10, 11, maybe even 12 hours. What do you do in an airport, a place designed for an hour or two, uh, for much, much longer than that? Let me tell you, because this is a problem I, funnily enough, have a lot because I travel, and let me share with you how I make it a more fun time at the airport Maybe it's useful. Your first option is to go somewhere to eat. This seems like a real good idea. I mean, people go to restaurants, that kills a lot of time usually. However, airport restaurants are not only optimized for speed usually, uh, but also they're incredibly priced compared to the outside. I just looked and I know this is an airport, but it was 20 something dollars for two XXL slices. I don't know what that means in terms of real pizza, uh, but incredibly expensive if you'd like to eat. So what I instead prefer to do is first of all, go on a walk. See the entire terminal, you've got plenty of time, and so do that. If you don't spend much time in airports, you'd be surprised by how big these buildings are, how complex they can be, and when you don't have a flight to catch, you can genuinely just walk around. As long as you don't go for anything that says one way cannot return, as long as you don't exit to try and go to the land side, oh, which you could just do and come back through later, I guess, like this, do not go through there. That is a big no entry sign. But as long as you don't <laughs> do what I was apparently doing while I was recording, uh, which is, by the way, very hard to do accidentally, as long as you don't do that, you'll probably be just fine. And while you look around the airport, you'll start to realize that it's a big place filled with just empty areas. There are big places that there are constant passenger flows to, but there are also just empty corners. And uh, today I'm gonna try and show, share with you some of them that I find around Calgary. But it is incredibly interesting to actually look around an airport, and even if you don't think it's interesting on a level of like, wow, logistically, this is a huge operation. You know airports are huge buildings with huge runways, but you don't always see it. Like, look at the mountain views you can get from here. Those are real mountain views, trust me. Um, but if you if you uh, look around an airport, you start to see some more of the intri intrigue, I would say. But more importantly, you might find some dead places that are worth hanging out in. So here are some Canadian chairs, I don't know, they're apparently Canadian, next to a big hot open fire. Like, look at this. There's an area specifically set out for stretching, although it apparently just has a bunch of sleeping chairs in it, which, by the way, very useful for a day like this. Also, this is Calgary Airport. One of my favorite weird things that seems to come through here are these weird electric people moving buses. It's very odd. <laughs> I don't know what use these uh, vehicles would have anywhere else. But that's the cool thing about this airport. Just got a roadway going through the middle of it. You know, they say in North America they love cars, and so they build a road through the airport. But yeah, it is. Very interesting as you walk around. And here, if we walk all the way to the end of the gates where there are the fewest people. find enough seating for a whole plane full of people, except there's no plane departing, so all the space in the world. Lay down, relax, whatever you want to do until the flight departs. It's a good time by itself, but uh, yeah, it's cool to see the dead spots in an area, which is useful for you if you want to be somewhere not surrounded by people. If you love being near people, go hang out by the busy gates and move from flight to flight. Most people, though, would prefer the peace and quiet you get back there. Which is why I'm talking quietly. I really should have just started doing the super loud, hey guys, like the video voice, but uh, I did not, sadly. Anyway, so what, what else can you do? So you can go for a walk around the airport. I almost want to just do the entire thing, show you everything, which I totally will be doing, just <laughs> maybe won't be bothering you of it. However, what if you don't just like walking around an airport and then hanging out in quiet areas? Because honestly, you have a phone, you probably have headphones. If you don't have them, guess what you can buy? Oh, this isn't a headphone dispenser, this is a, a medical dispenser. That's fun. Buy some, buy some painkillers. Numb yourself to take it the time away. Fun. Buy some, buy some painkillers. Numb yourself to take it the time away. Buy some, buy some painkillers. Numb yourself to take it the time away. Huh. E. Everybody going to D and E? Yes. Yeah, no one's for C? Strawberries? You can also take the airport bus apparently. 
That's a fun time. Objectively incredibly silly, but you know, sometimes fun to do something that is probably a waste of time, but you've got too much time, so it's fine. Speaking of things being fine, I've always wanted to see. Here's an interesting fact you might not know about Canada airports: is they all have, or all the major ones, I should say, uh, all have a area in, inside of them which is technically part of the United States. So if you depart for a uh, U.S.-bound flight, you actually enter the U.S. inside the Canadian airport, so you can land as a domestic flight, and you're already, you know, you're in the country. You've, uh, you've gone through the immigration and customs already, and I think that's such a wacky concept that I've never actually seen in person. There's one in Dublin, Ireland as well, if you are curious. Uh, but they never made one in the UK. And, that, you know, how often am I flying through Dublin to the US? Surprisingly un unfrequently. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go find out what that looks like. Then I'll tell you the real secret. Uh, to get to the US, you have to go out these doors to your right and then go back in. Well, okay, I'll thank you for saving me from that then. Yeah. <laughs> The nice airport man told me I really, really should not go to the US area. <laughs> so I shall not. <sighs> That's right, if you need to kill 12 hours at the airport, I just recommend looking at the salmon. It's very anatomically accurate. That is the faces they have. That is how they swim in the amount of water. And they do have the beavers and the owls and even the trees above them. But uh, no, the real answer is follow a sign or ask a person about one of these salons, also known as lounges in the uh, real world, sometimes known as the English-speaking world. But uh, <laughs> yes, French people are fake. Tell me I'm wrong. There are usually, almost every major airport, the sorts of ones you'll be flying from, will have a half dozen of these uh, at, at a, as, a, as a decent guess. Uh, but about bare minimum one, uh, and usually two or three. And uh, as long as it's not affiliated with an airline, and even sometimes then, you can just go in and see what the deal is. Wait, actually, while I'm in the international terminal anyway, I should point out that this place is incredibly dead in the Canadian airport. If you're in a country where there's mostly domestic flights, but there's a whole international area or terminal or set of gates, go there because most international flights depart at around the same time, which means they have this huge area with all the seating needed for all those people, uh, but it's likely gonna be the same time as your flight, so most people show up later in the day. And so, therefore, you can have the whole fire and a set of four seats to yourself or a whole corner of the terminal if you really want it. Which is cool, right? However, what you really want is something a little nicer, perhaps. And so what I recommend if you have a whole day ahead of you is one of the Fuji things that isn't Fuji anymore because of the amount of people who recommend. So this here is a sign for the Aspire Lounge. Aspire is not an airline. They might reference that they'll let in passengers from certain airlines. You can ignore all of that. Honestly, in most cases, as long as it's not busy and it's not an airline lounge, you can just go up and see how much money it costs. This one's up in an elevator, apparently. It'll be fine eventually, I'm sure. Hi, I'm good. Just for curiosity, how much is a day pass here? It depends on what, which airline. Uh, Air Canada. So that would be $40, $39.90. Oh, you change, you change based on which airline you've Oh, yeah, that's really interesting. We have certain contracts with different airlines. Yeah. I can have three hours from now, right? Not three hours before departure. No, two, three hours before departure. No, for business class, you can. Oh, you right, yeah. Enter it two times. Oh, wonderful, okay. yeah. So you want to check in, in right now? Yeah, please. Yeah. You checked in early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nowhere else to go. After the hotel kicks you out, you know. No. <laughs> Can I use the shower or does it cost $10? It costs $10. Okay. So not only are there fun seats with fun views of the terminal. I mean, do you want views of the terminal or do you want views of the airport? I mean, the runway, that's the real question. But there's free food available here, after noon at least. Right now we can imagine the idea of ham, salami and turkey and all these options. Uh, but there's also, oh, there's actually a pancake machine. Never mind, I'm in love with this. These are my favorite things in the world. There's also, Right there. Um, also beverages, uh, alcoholic and non-alcoholic, they seem very keen to mention. And one of my favorite things, this is genuinely one of the best things, 
is they have these sleep pods. It costs $10 extra, which isn't the norm, but most airport lounges will have some form of shower facility. This one's a bit weird because you have to awkwardly angle past the toilet to get to the shower. But look at that, a nice shower so you can feel fresh before a plane, which is something you'll need after spending so long in an airport and then spending so long on a plane. If you arrive early to an airport, you pay $39.99, which is an incredibly cheap hotel, and you get food, you get drink, and you get one of these. If you watch any travel YouTubers, they'll mention time and time again, you gotta get a travel credit card, which is true if you're traveling 15, 20, 30 times a year. It's true, I, I love and take advantage of my, my uh, Dragon Pass, which means I didn't pay for this visit, by the way. Um, but paying $39.99, is honestly a worthwhile thing for these situations. If you arrive at the airport far too early and you can take full advantage, why not spend? That's 39.99 Canadian, I think, by the way. So in US dollars, like 30, and in pounds, that's about 25. And that's food, beverages, and a nap. Why wouldn't you do it? And so I'm gonna take a nap right now and just kind of mention that, yeah, when it comes to arriving early places, it's hard, but this is what I do. If you're curious where I'm going, by the way, I've got a flight home to London. <laughs> I, th they leave super late in the day. I'm trying to explain this because I did a terrible job earlier. Um, flights from uh, North America to Europe basically can only take off at night. On the very east coast, you can get some flights that leave really early in the day and get there really late. But because of the time zone difference, even if this flight left at 11 a.m. and it takes eight hours to get there, that means it would land at 7 p.m. except, oh, time zones, now it's actually 2 a.m. in the morning, and who wants to land at 2 a.m.? You'd much rather land in a normal time in the morning and sleep on the plane, which definitely always happens. Everyone sleeps on the plane and doesn't just like, you know, have that type of sleep. So having sleep at the airport is extra valuable on those sorts of flights. And that's why I recommend that you do it. Also, there's light, maybe? Oh yeah, you got a light in the sleep room. I don't think I need that. You also get these little TVs, which I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna have anything good. It's a Vizio TV with a HDMI box. But it tells you the time, and honestly, I'm just I'm I'm just here for the free pancake machine and the and the sleep. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video about airports was useful. Maybe it's not. Third channel, I don't care. Goodbye. I don't know where this fits in the video. Maybe it doesn't. It's been a long day at an airport today, okay? <laughs>